Well, this is probably the last tour of the uh, engine before it's installed for the 1986 Suburban. A little background on the Suburban. 1986 was the last year for carburetor. And when you look for a replacement engine, as uh, the engine that was in this was a 350, you'll find that there is nothing listed for 1986. This is the engine that came out of there. It's a pretty standard Chevy 350, except in this particular year and forward, they used a one-piece rear oil seal, which changed the design of the crankshaft and therefore the flywheel or what they call the flex plate with an automatic transmission would not match up to the older engines. That's not a problem with the replacement engine because it came with a flex plate as you see here which uh, fits the older style crankshaft with a two piece oil seal on the back and that flex plate will also fit my transmission so there should be no compatibility issues. So here's the replacement 350 engine from Pace Performance which was considered a turnkey engine. However, there were quite a few things that had to be added to the engine to make this work. I'll start out with this item right here. This is the temperature sensor for the temperature gauge on the dashboard. This was not the same uh, size as the old engine, so I had to locate that. Basically, you locate a temperature sensor, water temperature sensor, for a 1972 or older Chevy 350. So here what we have is the uh, replacement uh, exhaust manifold, which is an original equipment replacement manifold uh, available from Dorman and uh, new hardware to install that. As we move around the back of the engine, we're looking at uh, an oil pressure sensor switch right here. This here sends the uh, information to the oil pressure gauge on the dashboard and that's connected to a T-fitting under here and another oil pressure switch comes off the other side of that T-fitting and that's right here. You have to sort of educate yourself with these engines to find out what these are used for but the second oil pressure switch is used to feed uh, power to the electric choke so that the electric choke only begins to warm up when the engine is running and developing oil pressure. Coming back around to this side of the engine is the other replacement and new uh, original equipment exhaust manifold. And here is the oil dipstick that I had to remove over from the other side. Uh, this is the original style dipstick that comes out uh, away from the hot exhaust manifold. Up front we've got the uh, power steering pump which is the original one with the brackets that mounted right to the front of the, this engine just as it came off the 350. Uh, engine that was in there and uh, I just cleaned them up and painted them. I got a bracket here that's uh, waiting for the air conditioning compressor. And the fan pulleys installed to the front of the crankshaft and the front of the water pump. Water pump came with the engine. And on the other side we've got the alternator with a uh, repainted bracket. Uh, right here, right here, this area right here is uh, a uh, vacuum switch that's uh, turned on and off by uh, water temperature. This came off the old engine and what this does 
is it draws vacuum from the top of the carburetor for the transmission torque converter lockup so that under certain circumstances when the engine is warmed up and you're developing vacuum at the top of the carburetor uh, you will get the transmission torque converter to lock up so that was a little bit of a puzzle to figure that out but I've got it figured out and I've got it plumbed in there now the other problem that you run into on these engines is is right here is the uh, right there I'm trying to reflect some light off that that is a 45 degree nipple for the heater hose 5 8 heater hose because uh, it comes in at an angle and it will not work with the fuel line they've got here to this Holley carburetor now we're going to take a look at the Holley carburetor itself and this did not come ready to install to a Chevy Suburban this bracket we're looking at here right here that I had a purchase from Holly that has a snap-in connection for the throttle cable and for the transmission kick down cable and besides that we've got this little piece right here where the kick down cable connects to that was a separate item that also had to be purchased from Holly it's called the geometry changer so that the distance between here and here will be compatible to the old configuration and on top of that down here there's a throttle stud for the throttle cable there's three different types you have to determine what kind you have and that had to be purchased separately and lastly is the cruise control which is here vacuum operated this stud for the cruise control did not fit into here I had to buy a special adapter uh, a bushing so that that could be mounted there so now we have all through we have cruise control kick down and throttle cable so it should be set to go well, the next order of business is the power brakes now power brakes have to have vacuum at all times for the power brake booster and from the old setup this here goes to the power brake booster through a check valve of some sort and then a steel line that went back to the old quadrajet carburetor on this manifold there is a vacuum port right in the manifold right here which I figured is the only one nearby and also it'll give you steady manifold vacuum at all times so I put a 45 degree here with an adapter and the old fitting right here that used to go into the quadrajet carburetor now goes into that fitting so this is and I had to reshape and reform that steel uh, line which actually goes through a grommet under the cruise control here in this area here I hard to see it right there so that problem was solved by that uh, you have to understand tapered thread sizes for national pipe thread NPT it's called and uh, there is a diagram from Edelbrock on the manifold that tells you the size uh, of these ports and you really have to educate yourself to be able to determine what you need to do to make this all work the uh, last thing that I can think of here that had to be dealt with is the spark plug wiring the engine came with a beautiful set of red spark plug wires that were labeled the numbers of the cylinders both ends and I was unable to use those because they originally had these wired right over the top of the valve covers and coming in from the top however on these original equipment 
manifolds. The manifolds are at the top and the plug wires have to come in from the bottom. So the uh, this required these longer plug wires which I took from the old engine which uh, really weren't that old so uh, they had to be the plugs have to be wired from the bottom under coming under the manifold away from the heat and believe me it's no fun doing it even when the engine is sitting here in front of me but it's really bad when you're trying to do a tune-up and you're crawling under the car trying to figure out where these wires are supposed to be routed so I had to install these brackets on the back here as they used to be installed and route the wires around and under the manifolds and it's a whole special set of wires for this truck with some of the boots that are straight out so that they get around the hot manifold and other ones at a right angle so uh, that's all going to have to come off when the engine gets installed and then put back on again after it's inside the truck. But at this point I've run out of things to do. The next order of business is to get this motor down on the ground and to install the transmission to it. And then it will be installed into the truck as one complete unit. So the next order of business will be to do exactly that. The one last thing that needs to be worked on after it's, the engine is in the truck is plumbing to the fuel pump. It's a 3 8 NPT tapered pipe fitting here and it seems to be coming out in the wrong direction so uh, it's going to have to be dealt with, uh, studied, figured out. One of those things that will happen when it's time. I've got so much taken off the truck right now that it would be very simple to take the bumper off and give me all that extra clearance under here to move the cherry picker in, drop the engine in and I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to be doing is just pull the front bumper off so this can be put in as gently and as controlled as possible but uh, the next step is to get this engine in this truck and start hooking up the vacuums and the wiring and fuel canister and uh, eventually get it started <laughs>